neither of us know our opinions. So this is how I want to say it. On three out of 10, we're going to say our score. Now, remember on this podcast, if you have a seven, you can't say a seven. Okay. It has to be either a six or Already, an eight. I, I know. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, eight. ten. Okay, cool. Why an eight? This is non-spoilers first. So for everyone who has not watched Long Legs, you are safe. Um, nothing wrong with the movie, personally. It's more of my, again, my personal yeah. opinion. The trailer made it so much more horrifying than the actual movie was. Okay. So I never saw the trailer. I, I don't know what was in it. I don't yeah. know anything to that aspect. Um, I, I think this is the best horror film of this current decade in terms of what it's trying to do. Now, I've had people try and argue with me it's not a fucking horror movie. I'm like, no, it is. Horror has different subgenres to it. Yes. There's an, obviously, if you don't agree on it, I didn't think the movie was the scariest thing in the world. No. Nope. I'm not going to lie. I did have a nightmare the night after I saw it, <laughs> um, which I'll, I'll say in my spoiler, I'll say in the spoiler part, which part was in there. This film, though, I thought was just going to be like, I didn't expect the hype. The hype was, and you're not on social media, but the hype was that this is the fucking scariest thing and the most horrifying movie and the most gruesome movie in years. <laughs> and I do not agree with that. It is not, you don't see all the kills. If you're saying, if anybody's saying this is the most gruesome movie, I have people seen, were saying that go watch terrifier. Yeah. But what I will say is that this film executes on one thing that a lot of films are missing and that's atmosphere. Absolutely. And 100%. that is where, and that is where the film works at. And that's why I loved this movie. I loved it because every single time something happened, like it just always kept progressing the story more and more to where I was so fascinated by long legs, by the FBI agent, by this entire thing. And uh, let's just jump into spoilers. We are going to talk spoilers for Long Lake. So if you've not seen the movie, go away, come back, rewatch it. If not, cool, spoil yourself. I was, I did not know she was going to be like a psychic that could like tell, like just by like looking at things and, and stuff like that. And when that got introduced really early on, like when her partner's oh, head no. got blown off. It, it starts off fast. Yeah. And I loved that moment. I love how she just walks out and she's like, it's that guy's house. Yeah, and I was like, not expecting. No. And then I love how it ties in to, you know, how now it goes in the long legs. And I like yes. how, th like, the, on a technical level, this film is so fucking good. But I like how, okay, you introduced that supernatural element, right? I didn't think any more, any other supernatural elements were going to come into play. And then you get into the doll stuff. And when the doll's introduced, I'm like, this is interesting. Because what is the fuck is this thing that they find? Mm. And when you start diving into what is this doll? How does it work? The silhouette behind it, like the imagery, um, oh, or like yeah. when the hood's over it and you, you just see, see the, the eyes. eyes. That was That's what was in my nightmare. My nightmare was we came home and a doll was in the house like that. And it's fucking fascinating. And then again, you keep adding the supernatural because then they're like talking about how like he's never been in the house. His fingerprints are nowhere. Yeah. So I'm like thinking to myself, oh, he probably like burned them off or did something weird or like somehow convinces them to kill everyone. But it's fucking great how it's all goes back to that supernatural. And it makes the movie and its atmosphere makes it feel evil. Like it makes you you feel like you're watching something evil, which was not what I was expecting at all. I am so happy I never watched a trailer and I'm so happy I did not look at a lot of the early reactions beforehand because yeah. I think that completely changed my opinion on what I was. I just thought I was getting an FBI agent going after a serial killer and I watched a movie and I was like, oh, there's supernatural shit in here. This director, Osgood Perkins, fun fact, do you know who his dad is? Hmm. His dad is the guy who played Norman Bates in the original Psycho movie. So oh, yeah. that's a big throwback that I that's didn't know. That's crazy. And I, I watched a lot of interviews with him where he says that he does not like a lot of modern day horror films. And you can clearly tell from this, this is a nice throwback to old school 70s, 80s, LA, or like crime noirs. Yeah. But with a modern twist to it where it feels like it is made in modern day. And this man, if you please go and direct an Alan Wake movie, every single layer of this movie felt like an Alan Wake film like or an Alan Wake game like especially Alan Wake 2. Like I was really taken back by that. Like almost a lot of this movie actually 
felt like certain things that you did in Alan Wake 2, specifically as the FBI agent. Mm -hmm. You take clues and you look at them and you feel them and you put them up on a board and you actually try to see like what did this person do and you like get teleported into like that scenario. Phenomenal. So please go on. Uh so watching the trailer, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool. This is an FBI agent hunting down a serial killer. Yeah. I was expecting really disturbing imagery. Um, Which is not, not super. Bad. No. Yeah. Super gory. Or I shouldn't say super gory, but just it's going to be some shit. Not the movie whatsoever. Yeah. What I... Because I really thought about it. I was like, what is this movie from the horror perspective? Because from this movie, it did not scare me. Um, no, it's it's not a movie that in the moment it's scary. It's one of those movies that you like think on. Like I, I think like in terms of like like a family watching this, like, well, family should not be watching this with their kid. But I don't you know what I mean? Like that that's the thing that a horror subjective in terms of what scares you and stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think this horror for me it did not work. Mm -hmm. It's good. For different reasons and why I like it. The horror, I thought, was honestly, whatever. It's very, almost boring to me. But where that's like... It's but it's not like good, straight horror, though. It's exactly. Not. What this style of horror is, is unsettling. Yeah. For some people, they'll find this movie incredibly unsettling. Yeah. Because of what it is. Me, personally, I'm just like, eh. Yeah. What I absolutely thought was so, so beautiful. One, the story of yeah. like the pacing of it, how this FBI agent, how they really tell get, it too, how, how they tell like, it. Like I was and really surprised. The cinematography yeah. was insane. I love really wide. You're always looking on the background, seeing if something's going to be moving focuses. I love that cinematography when he gets into her house. So good. And like walks behind. Yeah. Him. Like it's always look, it's trying to distract you mm -hmm. from like, I remember when she's on the phone in the cabin with her mom. Yeah. And you see just the kitchen. Yeah. And you're waiting. You're waiting for something. And nothing ever does. So it keeps that tension and it makes you unsettled. Like you're expecting something to happen, but nothing, nothing does. does. But that's also what I love about it is that set up from the first scene where he pulls up in the car and it's a wide lens of the house. And then when the little girl comes out and he talks with her. Mm hmm. I, I love that because that scene establishes so much. It establishes that any time that that angle, no matter what the point of view is, it's he's there. That means he's watching them outside of her cabin house. Same out angle. And you know, like from my mind, I was sitting there. I was like, he's out there right now. He's watching her. And vice versa, as that goes out, she, she sees him outside, you know, and she goes out there. And they keep doing that wide angle a lot throughout this movie. And it always made me feel that he was there. And if it wasn't him, it was the man downstairs, yeah. which was creepy. And I will say shout out to the marketing department on here. So I don't know. Do you know what Letterbox is? I don't know if you know. It's like an app you can like review movies on, like okay. follow friends. So I put my review on there. There's a man. I'm assuming it's some, someone from the studio who is commenting on most long leg reviews with his symbol stuff. And it says the man downstairs. That's the name of the letterbox account. <laughs> and when you go to the account to look at the two, the only two movies that they've ever watched says that they watched it in 1970, 75 and 1968 on January 14th and June 14th. That's funny. So I was That's like, really that good. is really good marketing. Um, and they even, uh, they posted a trailer, not a trailer, but they posted the heartbeat of the main chick when she saw Nicolas Cage in, in the uniform for the, for the outfit for the first time. And how fast her heartbeat started racing. The little girl? No, 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 no. The main FBI agent. Oh, really? Like, uh, her name's Michael Monroe, amazing actress. Um, yeah. When she first saw him, they had a thing on her that shows boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and, and he is creepy looking. Yeah. He has uh, definitely a weird, crazy look to him. Yeah. Um, I tried my hardest to not laugh when he slammed his face into oh, the yeah. table. Oh, yeah. That was gory. I was like, like, it, so I thought the movie theater was going to be dead. No. no. When I first, like, I told you. Well, I purchased my tickets and there ain't, there's like no one. Yeah. 
Oh no, there was a yeah. packed theater, so I didn't want to be rude to these people. Because I'm like, you notice how the credits were? What? You notice how the credits were? How they came down instead of up? I did not realize that. Yeah, and Off that the top was of my head. that Actually, was a really cool. Granted, I didn't save for yeah. that long of the credits. That was, but you know, what was weird. That was a really cool experience because I usually don't. Um, every one of my theaters stayed and kept talking to like really? whoever they went with. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. no one really left until the credits were done. Um, and it was cool listening to people talk. Cause like some people were like, I really liked it, but I more appreciate it than loved it. And I get I all those. Like, I feel like I'm, I landed that camp. That's a lot of like, um, a lot of film critic friends of mine who are like huge on horror. We're like all in that same camp. I appreciate this more than love it. Where like, I don't know if again, if it's just because I literally knew, I knew who was in it. And I knew it was an FBI agent going after a serial killer. Mm-hmm. That's literally all I knew about the movie. I knew nothing else. And I'm so happy that is the way I watched this yeah. movie. And I would definitely say, like from someone that loves horror and just likes really messed up things. Yeah. <laughs> this movie was, is definitely, I, I put it up there with like, um, hereditary. Oh yeah. Like, like not level, but in the same sense of, this movie deserves to be recognized as one of the greats when it comes to horror because it does something so It makes well. it just feel it's evil. Like, it makes you feel like you're watching something evil, which is what I really like. And that's all from the atmosphere. That's why I liked it. I don't care for jump scares. I think jump scares are ass. There are pretty good ones in here, specifically when she has the photo, and then all of a sudden it, like, flashes to him. Oh, yeah. Thing. Really good editing, too, in here. But for me... Like, I hate jump scares. I despise them. I think they're the cheapest thing you could ever do for a horror movie yeah. in terms of, like, delivering, like, a scare. Because you're just playing off yeah. of just tensions. Yeah, you can sc- easily just throw in an easy, like, mm-hmm. super catch you off guard, yeah. and then the next thing, bam. But this movie, it doesn't rely on, like, uh, when the mom, when, the, when she goes inside to get her mom, and the FBI agent sitting in the car, and then you just see the mom in the back of the window, and then she comes oh, around. Oh, yeah. Just so, like, the, the poster, have you seen the poster of the girl? Like, it's that oh, moment. Yeah, yeah. And I've always wondered, that was the other thing I knew. And when I saw that, I was like, I will never unforget that moment. Like, that. every time I see that poster yeah. now, I'm just going to think about that. And that's what I loved. I actually liked that they didn't show a lot of the kills. I liked that it was more of a again a thinking thing like it's letting the imagination do its thing exactly and that's where i really liked it and that's where i liked that they gave explanations i didn't expect to get an explanation of what was going on but they also don't tell it in a lazy way they tell it in like everything even her past they're like oh do you not remember this do you like people are telling her and it usually can, like, exposition in horror films can be usually very boring. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy how they did it into this. No, it was very well done. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, it was, it's really good. Yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. Again, it's just not the type of horror that, that you, I enjoy. Yeah. The, this is the type of horror that I love. Yeah. And I you're, was. You're, more, you're a fan of Hereditary. Yeah. Because of I think this uh, is better style. than I think this is better no, than I know. Hereditary. I totally did yeah. it, but it's just a different style of horror that some people are going to love and some people mm-hmm. are not. Yeah. I would land in the camp of I appreciate it for what yeah. it is. It's just not the horror that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. It's one of, I'd have to like go back and really like look through the movies, but I would say this is the best horror movie to do unsettling right exactly and i some guy again people like to attack about opinion so when i said this, this was the best horror film of the decade first off they mentioned what about all these movies i'm like sir those were in the last decade this is the 2020s decade 2020s decade of horror films have been honestly not great personally when he talked to me get released that, talk to me was the one and then he goes what about talk to me because i would put talk to me I, as it like it's gonna stay number one for this decade yeah. Until something they're making a new horror. Yeah, I was gonna right say now. unless so. like Christopher Nolan comes out with yeah. one and it's phenomenal. If Alien comes out and it's like again, I know what to expect from it. Yeah, it's probably not gonna do what yeah. Talk to Me did because it did something so new. Yeah, but and horror is great because Cynthia thought Talk to Me was just fine. Like That's she didn't. So she didn't. Crazy. She was not blown away by it. But I think again. 
Talk to Me is such a low-budgeted movie, which is, like, insane to me in the end of the day how great that movie looks. But I think I like Long Legs more than Talk to Me, personally. I think it's overall a stronger movie, but I loved Talk to Me. It's one of my favorites of the decade as well. It's probably my second favorite horror film. But, like, this... I went through a lot of horror, and I know there's a lot that I've not seen, but, like, X, I thought was just good. It's a, it's a franchise I appreciate. Those. Like Pearl. Pearl was fine. I saw Maxine and it was good. I liked it, but it, that franchise is something I more appreciate. Like I just don't really care for those horror films. Like they're not things that I would rewatch. I would go and rewatch Long Legs today. I've actually thought about trying to make time to go see it again. I wouldn't see Long Legs again. Oh, I would. I love. But it. again, that's yeah. not my style of horror. Yeah, I I love. Talk what is to your me? style of horror? Like talk to talk me. To like me. what else? Terrifier. Terrifier. Yeah. Because yeah. They're coming out with Funko Pops for Terrifier. Are they really? Yeah. That's amazing. So I like anything that I almost watched it yesterday. Terrifier. Yeah. I got bored. I was like, I think I might watch this. I'm going to be honest with you. Like my fit. Yeah. My, so really quickly to answer your question, yeah. my favorite type of horror is really disturbing, unsettling things, but like gore wise, right? Like yeah. more. Yeah. And you can even do disturbing, disturbing, disturbing imagery like, uh, um, yeah. the ring. Oh yeah, and like that's where I'm like, that's what I wanted Long Lakes to nail, mm -hmm. and what I, like I think where it would have made me like this is a ten is give me imagery where it's just like, please like change like that camera angle because of how just like unsettling goosebumps it gives me. Yeah, but I think that's what's unique it to me, though. is when they do show gruesome stuff, it's either from her perspective seeing the FBI agent get shot, mm -hmm. seeing the dead bodies in the bed, or it's from the doll's perspective, mm. which is interesting. So like at the end of the movie, when she goes in and the doll's sitting there. Yeah, really. Yeah, I don't want to. We need to talk about that. Yeah. The ending. First off, I, I want I almost bursted out laughing because of like. Not because it was so funny of like, holy shit, how the fuck is this going to. How is this going to go right now? Mm -hmm. I'm like so caught off guard. I'm like sitting like, holy, f like, did tense. you, did you notice the, tense. did you notice the devil? Yeah. You see, when she gets entered and they close the door and you see the silhouette behind her, right behind the, behind the window, I was like, oh fuck, the doll's already there. Yeah. And she enters the room and I'm like, this is it. I'm like, I would pop that guy in the head. I would pop the mom in the head. But me and Cynthia were talking about this and it's now a conversation of, and, and that's one thing that surprised me. She loved the movie. She fucking loved it. And I'm sitting there in the movie. I'm like, I don't know how she feels about this. She might fucking hate it. Like, And I was trying so hard not to hype that movie up for her. Yeah. And she walked, uh, like the movie ended, I'm like, what do you think? She goes, I love that. That was really good. But that, me and her have been having conversations on that now. Does she become long legs now? Because she saved the girl. Does that entity now follow her? And I told her, I was like, I personally hope not, but there is a angle of that where I can completely see that she has no choice but to do that or else this little girl dies. Because that's basically how it was set up. That's basically how it was set up, you know? What so do you mean? The reason she didn't die as a little girl is because her mom saved her by making a deal with the devil, basically, which was Nicolas Cage's character. Yeah. He dies, the mom still has to carry this on. Yeah. It's like her thing like she doesn't have a choice so does this entity because she doesn't shoot the doll you know what i mean like she keeps trying to reload it and everything and she we don't know we don't we don't know and in my opinion there's two ways to look at it she you takes the, the she takes the objective of having to make these dolls and you know kill these family members to continue on or she doesn't there's a couple ways to look at it one i'd have to rewatch that movie and really see how many rounds did that revolver have? How yeah. many rounds did she shoot? Another thing I really appreciated about how it ended, where it would make it very logical, was that if she got in there mm -hmm. and and she automatically knew what was going on and what was about to unfold, yeah, she could not start shooting, yeah, because at that point that would make her look like she's crazy. Oh yeah. But that's but what people want, would assume she is. But once that let's go into the kitchen, dad yeah. stabs her. Knife in his hand. All right. 
logical reason why she had to shoot him. Yeah. Her mom. She had a knife. But that's Did the, not shoot her yeah. until that happened. That's the thing. All the audience felt that was walk in there, fucking start popping heads because you know what's going to fucking happen. But again, to well, you, us, from a lot, yeah. but again, from a logic. No, I know logic, I know. and that's what makes this movie even better because it really grounds it. Yeah. No, and I get that, and but also it. from a grounding aspect, this is your friend. This is the, her family that you kind of like for the most part, and that's your mom. Yeah. Do you want to shoot them? No. Like I, that's that's why. Like I I get why she didn't. I'm just saying like. The outside looking in, that's what any person, any audience member is going to feel like they're going to do. They're going to walk in. But then you also want to see it unfold. So yeah. that's what I loved. And then like another thing we were talking about was uh, when he keeps talking about your house was so white. Your house was the whitest I've ever mm -hmm. seen. It's like it, on a surface level, you think, oh, snow, right? I look at it as purity that he was looking at the pure families who were just perfect nothing was wrong with them and it's like he would stalk them and see that like what is their pure levels you know you see a religious mom and a daughter and there's nothing wrong with them no one ever visits them they go to church probably they do all their things and nothing ever comes out of it yeah she was so pure i want to like, love that i want to say um and i really need to read it from front to back actually the bible because there's a lot of symbolism yeah Oh, in the yeah. Bible to, related to this movie. And also, I feel like there's just a lot of symbolism that you can read in the Bible and then also related to different movies because there is a lot of references in a lot of movies that they pull straight out of there. Yeah. Just because it's, if you know kind of thing, if you pick it up, it adds this like depth mm -hmm. to layer. Um, so that's, it could be referencing something in the Bible because there was a lot of references in that movie about a white house and something yep. with, related to white who knows i'll um, wait for a youtube explanation video to come out and explain beat by beat the things i didn't see or yeah. miss. but i i love this movie i i i have really gone back and forth this is my favorite film of the year even over dune uh like right now my top five is dune long legs furiosa challengers i can't oh and then i think number, my number five was civil war which was a really good movie too but yeah, Long Legs like made me go. It was the first horror film I watched this year where I was like, wow, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. That was what I wanted.